Welcome to abortion providers took PPP loans they weren't eligible to receive. Here's what happens next. Please welcome our host, Tommy Binion, Vice President of Government Relations at the Heritage Foundation. Well, good afternoon. Uh, it is a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. This uh, presentation is being brought to you by the Heritage Foundation, but this issue is being brought to you by Senator Paul. We are in the midst of the Democrats on the Hill considering another tranche of $2 trillion in spending just this week. And so I think it's very prudent that we take a look when these big spending bills go through where some of this money can end up. And as a matter of fact, it can end up with abortion providers and other lefty constituencies. So I'm excited to dive into that today. We've got U.S. Senator Rand Paul with us today. He is an MD. He is one of the nation's leading advocates for liberty. First elected to the United States Senate in 2010, he's proven to be an outspoken champion for constitutional liberties and fiscal responsibility. As a fierce advocate against government overreach, Dr. Paul has fought tirelessly to return government to its limited constitutional scope. He's not a career politician. He is a hardworking and dedicated physician. Uh, he came to Washington to shake things up, to make a difference and hold bad actors accountable. As I look over his career, he has certainly done that and much more. Senator, thank you for joining us today. Glad to be with you. Can you give us the, uh, the backdrop of this issue? I, I alluded to the fact that you are really driving this in Washington. You have uncovered this. Tell us what's going on. We know for a long time, uh, conservatives, people who are pro-life, have been offended by the idea of having government pay for abortions. Uh, most of us don't think that Planned Parenthood should get any money from government. What has happened in the past is they get about $300 million, and then there's this something called the Hyde Amendment. It's been around for 30 or 40 years that says none of that money is supposed to go for abortion. Well, in some ways that may or may not work because all money is sort of fungible, but at least it's some restriction. It's at least some statement in law that taxpayer money doesn't go to abortion. Well, fast forward now to the COVID epidemic of last year. The Small Business Administration created this big loan program. Even that's not really true. They, in the end, forgave all the loans, and they're all going to essentially be gifts, uh, not of money we have, but of money that's basically printed or borrowed, was given to small businesses. But the limits were that you had to be a small business. You couldn't be a big business. Big businesses were ineligible for this money. So the Trump administration found out that Planned Parenthood was applying for this money, and they applied for you know close to $100 million worth. Trump administration got wind of it, and the Small Business Administration, someone in the at Small Business Administration, a Trump appointee, sent letters to all 38 Planned Parenthoods that wanted the money, and some of who received the money, and said, send it back. You're not a small business. According to the business rules, you are actually a big business controlled by a huge conglomerate in Washington. Well, then we get to the Biden administration. Well, the Biden administration won't tell us what they've done, but they've basically given all this money, we think $91 million, back to Planned Parenthood. And when we ask them for documents, had they changed the Trump policy? They say, well, the Trump policy was never a policy. And we say, well, where are the letters? We say, they say, we don't have any record of the letters. They weren't processed uh, the way they're supposed to be. So we say, what does it take to process a letter? They won't give us a piece of paper, a single document. So we've been fighting them for nine months. And so in the minority, we don't have a lot of leverage, but we have some. The way the committees work is when Biden appoints a nominee, he can only get that nominee through if there's a vote. Well, we've been boycotting. So our members haven't shown up. No Republican has shown up for a meeting now for several months, mainly to block their appointees to try to tell them, we don't like you running roughshod over us. We don't like you giving money to Planned Parenthood and not explaining to us the rationale or the law, or if you've reversed the law or changed the policy. We've gotten zero documents from them. And so we're, I think, justifiably upset. The other thing about it is this money has no hide protections. So this means that the Planned Parenthood, 38 of them, got nearly $100 million and there is no Hyde Amendment attached to it, meaning that there are no restrictions. This money could go directly to pay for abortions. This would be the first time, really, in the history of our country that U.S. tax dollars has gone directly to Planned Parenthood without any restrictions that it shouldn't pay for abortion. So this is a big deal. 
Uh, the Democrats are wanting us to stand down. But so far, all the Republicans on the Small Business Administration have stood united. If we stay united, we can continue to block this uh, uh, nominee forever in hopes that that leverage will get us finally some of the documents. Senator, you used the, the, the term justifiably upset. Well, well, we are outraged, but we are extremely grateful uh, at Heritage, those of us that are on the that are on the meeting, uh, uh, the the pro life movement broadly across the country are grateful that you are standing tall. Uh, congratulations on your leadership, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Ninety one million dollars goes to Planned Parenthood despite an explicit prohibition. It is explicitly forbidden that Planned Parenthood would receive any of this money. Um, where is the crime here? There, how does that happen? Who do we blame for that? I think the Biden administration is basically wanting to sweep it under the rug, and they don't want to answer any questions. They know it's a political hot potato, so they're just making no pronouncements. The Trump administration did something that we should applaud, and that is that they sent a policy letter out. They said to the Planned Parenthood folks, you're not eligible, send the money back. And actually, some of the money was clawed back until the Biden administration reversed this. But the bizarre thing is the Biden administration is so afraid of the issue, they're not, they're not even willing to admit that they reversed it. But realize this is in the context. Right now, the Democrats have put forward their spending bills for this year, and they put forward a spending bill without Hyde protections. The Republican, the Republican caucus pushed back and said, we won't accept it without Hyde. So meanwhile, on the one hand, we want Hyde protection saying can't be spent on abortion. But on the other hand, we have all this money that flowed out, has already gone, and has no Hyde protections. So really, we've been lucky to get our small business committee rallied and unified. We now need to rally the whole conference because this is a big deal and we shouldn't just let it go away. The other side just wants to, to hide this issue, move on as if nothing happened, and they're pushing uh, uh, this, this nominee forward. But the nominee also would oversee this program. So I think we're justified in holding this nominee, one, because they haven't been forthright. They have not uh, been forthcoming with the information. But two, because this nominee will actually oversee some of these funds, and he has not uh, been explicit that he will give us the information either. So your effort has been tremendous, but it's, it's been two-pronged, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. One is to expose this truth, is to expose the fact that um, that $91 million is not an insignificant amount of money, uh, and it's not an insignificant amount of money for Planned Parenthood. That would be, quick calculation, almost 20% uh, of their annual budget there. Uh, but the second prong is to claw that money back, um, and, and, and uh, the blocking of the nominees is part of that. What would you say your progress towards that goal is? of clawing the money right back. Right now, I think it, it, in some ways it's a at least a temporary success that we have everybody unified. It's hard to keep all the Republicans together. I think we're lucky that on this committee, all the Republicans are pro-life. You know, there are a few senators up here who are not pro-life. So everybody's pro-life. They know it's a pro-life issue. And I've tried to encourage the pro-life community, and this helps to get the message out, because it'll help everybody to stay unified if they know that people are watching. Right now, it's Republicans. You want to make sure Republicans know that the pro-life community is watching. Will you fight this money that was given to Planned Parenthood? And we have a chance still. So I think we keep fighting this. If we uh, stay together, there is no limit to when this will stop if they do not give in or budge. Now, 2022 comes, and we are going to take over the House and the Senate, or at least one of the, or both. When we do, we will have the reins of power to investigate and to subpoena. If I'm in charge of a committee, I can promise you now I will use the subpoena power to get every last bit of information. We're going to get the emails. We're going to get the trail of all the information. We're going to find out who was hiding things over there and if they've done anything illegal in the process. Well, please tell your colleagues uh, that the pro-life movement is paying attention. Conservatives nationwide are paying attention. People that believe in good government, people that believe in the rule of law are paying attention and that we, we would love for them to stand strong. And when they do, we will be there for them. We've been talking about accountability on the federal government's level. Is there some accountability necessary for Planned Parenthood for having uh, access to this money uh, in the first place? Can we hold Planned Parenthood accountable? 
That's a question. I mean, part of the thing is, is when they set up this PPP program, which once again was money we didn't have, that's being borrowed, they just said to everybody, we're going to force you to shut your business down, but hey, don't worry, we're going to print up and give you money to replace the money you would have gotten for working. The problem with this program is they said to every individual that applied for PPP money that you just go to the bank and you and the bank will figure it out. There's no policing mechanism at all. There's nobody that reviews your application. It's a self-certification. So everybody just says, hey, I'm a small business, and this is how much money I make every year. Can you replace it? I didn't make any money last year. Will you give me this money? And they give it to them. So there really was not a good process here. And I suspect this is the tip of the iceberg. This one is more emotional for many of us because it involves abortion. But wouldn't we also be alarmed if businesses got this who lied about their finances? So there's a lot to be found here. But the bottom line is everybody needs to know that there is no free lunch. You cannot give away free stuff. You can't give restaurants and hotels free money. The answer is not free money. The answer is we shouldn't have lockdowns. We shouldn't have restrictions. In a free country, everybody makes a decision whether it's risky to go to a restaurant or whether it's risky to eat out. And frankly, there might be times when given your age or your health, you might not want to go to a public setting. But that should be the individual's decision, not the government's decision. Yeah, I think you're right. I think this flows from, um, uh, on several layers, a, a, a mistaken response uh, to this COVID crisis. Um, I, I think, Senator, you are uh, in, in right on the money as usual when you say that this is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the biggest clue we have that this is the tip of the iceberg is, is the stonewalling coming from the administration. Um, so just to review, the Trump administration, Small Business Administration, figured this out, tried to claw back the money. When the Biden administration came in, they actually reversed that specific action. You've been able to uncover that they've reversed it, and now they won't answer any questions about it. Well, and here's the interesting thing. They don't admit that they reversed the policy, but our staff has discovered when they list the people who got money from the previous quarter, guess what? Planned Parenthood's back in there, and they got $91 million. See, we want the Biden administration at least to say, this was the Trump policy, and we reversed it. What they're instead saying is, there never was a Trump policy, and the paperwork wasn't processed appropriately, so it doesn't exist. A Right to Life group used the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, to get some of this information or to try. What they were given was the letters that were sent to Planned Parenthood saying that the money was taken illegally were redacted, the entire letter. So the Biden administration, the Small Business Administration, is acting like this is the Manhattan Project to develop the atomic bomb, and it's so top secret that no one's allowed to. But this is also an abuse of the system for federal government to say, we have laws saying you have to divulge. There have to be transparency on what the federal government does. That's what FOIA does, Freedom of Information Act. But what they're doing is they're going around that and just blacking it all out and saying, sorry, it's classified, or sorry, somehow it's sensitive. And um, we still haven't seen any of it. But the interesting thing is, in our Democrat counterparts, when we talk to them, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, there, this exists. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that. And there's some letters from you know, the abortion providers back to the government. It's like, well, how come you've seen it all and we haven't seen it? So there's a sort of lopsidedness that a lot of things appear to be apparent to the Democrats we have not seen anything of. Then they promise us documents and nothing shows up. So it really uh, makes a, an honest person suspicious that someone's being dishonest or covering something up when they won't give you any information. The United States Congress wrote this law. The United States Congress authorized this spending. The United States Congress appropriated this money. When you contacted the executive branch to figure out how it was spent, you got back a piece of paper that had been entirely covered up with black sharpies, redacted. No, we didn't get we didn't even get that at all. They have not admitted to us that the letters exist at all. In wow. fact, she denied that they existed, and then she sort of said, "Well, they haven't been processed. Um, we're not aware of them being processed appropriately." But the redacted copy she gave to a pro-life group that did the FOIA request to us, they gave nothing. We've not gotten one document from. Small Business Administration. See, this used to be sort of a bipartisan, nonpartisan organization. There wasn't a conflict. This is the first time I know of there ever being a conflict in the Small Business Committee. It's never been a, 
a really noticeable committee because there is no controversy around it. But they chose to do something very controversial, and now they're choosing to cover it up. Funding abortion without any Hyde Amendment protections against the money being used for abortions hasn't happened ever because abortion started being provided in our country 40, 50 years ago. It has never been funded by the federal government because of the Hyde Amendment. This is the first time abortion is being directly funded by government. And there's, I think they're concerned that this could all of a sudden uh, uh, snowball into something much bigger than they calculated on. You have spearheaded efforts with the Senate parliamentarian to demonstrate uh, this waiver would run afoul of the Byrd rule. Can you tell us more about that process and what you're working to affect in that realm? We know budget reconciliation makes everyone's eyes roll up in the back of their head, and it's, a, it's an arcane sort of process in the Senate. But it's a way that you can, because the budget says you can avoid the filibuster by going through this process, uh, there are certain rules about what can be in a, in a bill and what can't be in. And some of these things they've tried to go about and have this debate and include in the reconciliation package ways to fix the rules on what is a small business and what isn't to make it easier for Planned Parenthood to qualify as a small business. Now, in our debates with the parliamentarian, the parliamentarian has sided with us and they haven't been able to try to do this. But these are things that we still continue to fight. Well, you know, it, 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 uh, it, it flows logically. Senate uh, process can be a, a little bit confusing, but it, it flows logically that this bill passed on a 60 vote threshold outside of the reconciliation context. And if it needs or if the Democrats want to adjust it, it should be adjusted in the same context under the same standard in the same process. We're glad you're in that fight as well. Um, good luck with uh, with the Senate parliamentarian. I hope that that works in your favor. I think that the Senate rules are um, a vestige of the American rule of law. So I think it's really important. Uh, hopefully uh, that comes through as well. I think everybody on this call is um, rightly upset about this situation. I think everybody on this call agrees with you, sir, that this is the tip of the iceberg. What they want to know, what I want to know, is what we can do about it. How can we help? What can the American people do to engage in this and make sure that innocent life is protected? You know, I think sometimes people feel like we're at a loss because we don't have the numbers to win in the Senate. We don't have the numbers to win in the House. We don't have the presidency. But I will tell you that moral outrage still goes a long way. There aren't many Democrats left who care anything about life. You know, they, they're fine with abortion up until the child is being born. They're fine with abortion sometimes after the child is born. So there really isn't a lot of moral outrage to Democrats. But the moral outrage over this being the first time that government funds are going directly to pay for abortion, really the first time in our history, we need more moral outrage. I would say that the pro-life community needs to be louder, longer, and we need to hear it, not just because we can influence Democrats, but because there will be some wobbly need Republicans ultimately, and we need to keep Republicans strong on this. And I can tell you of a story of a few years ago, I had an amendment to take Planned Parenthood money out of the budget that was being processed, out of the money that was being spent. And I was going to get a vote on it, and a, a senior, uh, senator sat next to me and said, well, we can't do this today. And I said, why? He says, well, because we, we might win. Some Democrats are missing and we might win the vote. And I said, well, I thought that's what we were for, getting rid of the funding for Planned Parenthood. He said, he said no, um, if we win and the amendment gets put on the bill, then they'll vote down all the spending. And I said, well, oh, so really spending is more important than life. And that's something that a lot of people need to realize, that there are institutional forces up here of both parties that are more concerned with big government than they are with the pro-life and with the life issue. So uh, it's important to remember, but people need to know this is the first time money has ever been sent from the federal government to Planned Parenthood with no restrictions on it. All money since the 70s has always had restrictions. It shouldn't go to Planned Parenthood, but it always had restrictions saying, you're not supposed to directly pay for abortions with this. Now we have nearly $100 million going to Planned Parenthood with no restrictions on it. You just, said a, couple of, you just said a couple of very profound things. Um, one is that the status quo, to keep the spending flowing, 
life is often swept under the rug. In order to get the omnibus spending bills passed, in order to get the, uh, the CARES Act passed, these issues are swept under the rug. That's a hard truth for uh, for the pro-life folks that are that are that are on this call, listening to this. Uh, but I think it's entirely accurate, and I think you've been able to uncover it in your career here in Washington. And the second very profound thing that you said: this is the very first time money has gone our tax dollars that we believe are protected from going to destroy innocent human life by the Hyde Amendment have gone to Planned Parenthood without that protection. And it's $91 million. And you, sir, are the one trying to uncover that. For that, we're grateful. We'll keep up the fight. Thanks for getting everybody together with a phone call. Hopefully, we can do it again sometime soon. Thanks. You, you bet. Thank you.